And we have a guest. Let's try this. Hi. Look at that. Well, it did it. Welcome, Dan. We have not talked to you in so long. <laughs> how, how the heck are you? I am good. How are you? Oh, I'm having technical difficulties at the moment. Oh, that's okay. I understand. It is a really crappy day out. Here we go. It's actually operator error. We may be a little crooked. <laughs> oh, well, it is what it is. Right on. No, it's horrible. Uh -huh. Anyway, mm. I'm sure. Thank you. Make sure we are in live chat. I have a. I have a little live red. It says, welcome to live chat. Remember to guard your privacy. Abide by your community guidelines. Thank you, YouTube. You are the best. All right. I'm going to come down here and pull it up. So I can read comments if there are any. Right on. Um, volume off. There we go. Ta -da. So, um, we'll just get the intro done real quick for All anybody right. who will be watching in the future. So, welcome. I'm Grandma Gaines. This is Kathleen, Kathy, um, and this is Bohemian Life. I am a reselling grandma, primar primarily on Poshmark, other platforms as well. And I'll leave all those links in the description box below as well as an email. If um, you have a topic of conversation you would like to talk about, or maybe you would like us to talk about. So today is Tuesday, and we have Kathy with us. Hey. Now. It, it looks like a random Tuesday, too. You looking outside? What a, what a day. Oh, my gosh. I know. Um, Western New York weather, right? Bound Just because they it. say it, yeah, you're bound to get it. <laughs> Faulkner has closed school today, so Faulkner kids are home. And, and I'm wondering how many people actually have any kind of setup in their vehicles for this kind of event. Well, you know, truth be told, I don't have anything like that in my vehicle. In um, the vehicle my husband drives back and forth to work, nothing like that. It's our main vehicle. Now right. the van, um, the van is equipped, and there is probably food of some sort in there. Not water. Got one. Not water. <laughs> well, it'll it freeze in there. And it definitely has um, bedding and clothes, stuff like that. Boot. I, I, I'll be getting my kit together today for sure. Getting some blankets and some snacks purchased, and things like flares little things even a first aid kit because you know there's been plenty of people trapped on 90 in a sudden storm and they're kind of screwed waiting you run your car too long you can die from the exhaust fumes don't run your car you're freezing because you don't have things in your car so i, I feel at our my age or our age or however you want to look at it we need to be a little bit more proactive no, that makes sense. It makes a whole lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. So on to the kit. We'll get that done. Since I know I have to tromp out there today and feed my birds. <laughs> it looks bad enough. I wish I had a rope from the house to the barn. You know what I mean? Oh my God. It looks I know. You're like, oh, I don't want to get lost. <laughs> no, I know. And pretty soon, well... December, the end of December, if we still have snow, right, we'll have a snowmobile season will open up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It goes right out by my house. I am too, except for the sound. It does make my dogs nervous about going out and going to the bathroom because they're sound sensitive. Um, and sometimes at three in the morning, you don't want to hear because they're... There are weirdos that are out all night. Oh, yeah. And you know what? We would be, on the weekends, we would be considered those weirdos because <laughs> I personally, I prefer to ride when it's dark. 
I love to ride at night instead. Um, it's no, easier shit. for me to see. But wow. also, also, I have a brand new helmet too. I did a um, a reveal and a review on it for my what snowmobile. Do you think of it? Um, well, I haven't so far. I've used it only when I went um, side by side riding. Ah. So I haven't been able to use it in the snow yet, but it has an awesome um, like sunglasses, you know, shield mm -hmm. and um, the heat shield. It's got all everything you can need. So, oh, nice. nice. Fingers crossed it'll make day riding a whole lot easier. Right. Because there's a lot of glare involved, I'm sure, in day daytime riding. Yeah. Snow blind, practically. Right. Oh, yeah. It's horrible. Yeah. Horrible. So, um, back to this snow kit. Is that what you would okay. call it? That's not what you oh, would yeah. call it. Oh, yeah. It's an emergency kit. You know, you should have one technically all year round. Because you could break down anywhere at any time. And it doesn't matter if you have a phone. True. You could be far enough out. It's going to be a while. Well, yeah. And if you are on the 90, and you know what? We have been stuck on the 90. And, and it's... It's treacherous. We've been yeah. stuck at 90 at least three times. And every single time you could see the exit, but you can't get out of your vehicle. Right. You can't walk to the exit to where there is food. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yeah, no, we do not. I will not take the 90 when winter hits. Right. Right. I'd rather take 20 anything. You know, yeah, okay. It's a, it's kind of a a side road when you're thinking about going to Buffalo. It even when we did the last festival that we did, um, at the, oh, yeah, there you go. We did a festival recently at this um place in Buffalo. We took back roads all the way there. My GPS is set up to no tolls and no highways. Mine too. It, it was perfect. Um. We avoided a lot of traffic. Our travel time was very smooth. And it's like, yo, that's, that's freaking perfect. That's you know? the way we travel. Yeah, all the time. All the time. And I'd rather be stuck on a side road. 90's scary. You know, yeah. when we go to Michigan, I haven't lived there since I was 20. Okay. And I used to drive there. So when I go there now and I'm like, wow, I used to drive here <laughs> they're doing 75 on the highway that's it's, the speed limit i know it i know it it is so scary it is and then and then they got construction and they're all hauling ass because you know if 75 speed limit 90 is what they doing right yeah totally and if you are on the 90 say you have a flat tire you're not supposed to get out and change it you're supposed to call somebody to do that for you Right. So you need something to keep you comfortable while you're waiting. And not only Whatever that, there's the money for that. No, my butt is <laughs> five and 20. <laughs> five um, and 20. That's right. Limp it to something on five and 20. You have an option. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or at least you can change your tire yourself and not get a dang ticket or whatever they do to you. Right. Or, or get splattered. There's that as well. <laughs> you really don't want to get out of your car on the highway in Michigan. I have um, my girlfriend's husband works for the highway department. He watches the cameras and he's like, trust those signs. He watched a guy trying to help a guy get blasted with a car. He's like, trust the signs. Stay in the car. Don't help anybody. Don't pull up behind anybody. Don't just stay in the car. Just let, like, yeah. okay. let the other people do their job. I understand that. I totally understand that. Um, it's like, wow. <laughs> all right. So what is the, what, what should be in this emergency kit? Probably like some, something easy that can keep. So like here's some granola bars or um, those protein bars, things that got a good shelf life. Cause you might not use your kit right away. You might not use it till you're out hiking one day. And honesty, you might be because you're prepared. You might even avoid problems. Who yeah. Knows? 
you know, um, but always some kind of something that will be good for your body. So, you know, like the granola bars, the protein bars, that's something that will keep you comfortable, make heat, uh, satisfy. Usually some of them cover all of it, the sweet, savory mix. So your, your tastes are, are happy. Obviously, you can put some straight up junk in there if you want to. It's about you being comfortable while you wait. Definitely a couple blankets so that you're able to stay warm. Um, mm -hmm. Water's great, but it's difficult in the winter to keep water non-frozen in your car. So I'm not exactly sure what kind of liquid you should keep in the car. I know that some of your water type drinks don't freeze because of all the other stuff in them. So maybe that's an option. You know, because I learned a lesson hauling a case of bottled water, thinking that was smart. Yeah, one morning that shit just blew up in the car. No place for the ice to expand because none of them were open. And it got cold <laughs> enough that night. Yeah, my husband was incredibly impressed with my idea at that moment. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Yeah. He's like, is that ice on the inside of the car? How's that happen, hun? Oops. Oops. No. I don't know, babe. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. But there's, there's definitely, I know that there are um, refreshments that you can keep that don't freeze as well, you know? Um, and there's also ways of taking, like, they have those thermoses that you can plug in. So maybe Definitely. that's a way that you keep liquids the way you need them. Or there's some thermoses also prevent freezing on the inside. So maybe that's how you travel with water. Some of that would require you, the person, to invest and do a little research into what would be best. Yeah. You know, what because you're gonna need liquid refreshment. If you're sitting there more than four hours, you're going to need a drink. You went four hours without a drink. That's not good for you. Yeah. You yeah. Know? That's a tricky one, though, because in the freeze, I know that it'll explode. Yeah, that's, yep, yeah, that is true. Mm -hmm. And then do you really want to put stuff in your body that um, it's got all this crap in it to make it? Well, it's. Right. Is that emergency helpful? I don't know. Is it? Is it? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm not, not sure. Either. I think you'd almost have to like do the research on what would be the best drink and then test to see how it froze. Does it fro it freeze in that slushy state where it doesn't get all the way frozen because of the sugars and syrups? Great. Slushy is cool. You can set that somewhere and warm it up. Okay. Yeah. That's doable. Does it freeze solid? Oh, that's not doable. Because you're going to have to open all of them and let some out. Yep, so yep. Absolutely. Maybe quart jars is the way. So if you can dump out what you don't, you know, dump out that expansion space, put your lid on, store those in there. But then that's glass floating around in your car. Do you have something to hold it? Yep. But that's an option. It become a flying object. Right. Yeah. I mean, make sure to think it all through. <laughs> oh my gosh. I know. And, um, and I only think of that because of the van, because every, everything you do, you have to remember it could become a flying object. So it's like, oh, okay. How did she die? <laughs> Mason jar to the head. <laughs> yeah, you know, Shit. That's horrible. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's horrible. <laughs> well, because then it would be our fault. <laughs> it would be. It would be. Do not recommend. Disclaimer, I do not recommend glass. <laughs> but maybe even a container that you can make sure to have the room for that expansion where you're able to I'd control like to how much is in there. Idea. Um, you know, because they have some decent size thermoses um mm -hmm. water jugs whatever you want to call it but then again you're, you're like this is going to require forethought and that's um, it mm -hmm. 
Because what happens if you leave it in your trunk or in your back seat? Will it always stay thawed out or will it eventually freeze? Right. Right. So if you got it, if you're taking water, you're going to have to make sure to leave room for that expansion that comes from turning it into ice. You know, so that's usually what an inch in the container is what you need available for the ice to expand to the lid without. That's good. Of course. Right. It's- <laughs> yeah, I do <laughs> believe it's an, an inch, though. I That allows for the the ice to push all the way up. Well, yeah, because um, otherwise, if it's a plastic container, is like you said, it's just going to crack. Right. Right. It's just going to crack and pop it out. Yeah. I forgot a um, can of pop one time in a freezer. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's a mess. Yeah. The yeah. lady of the house was not happy with me no. and I ended up having to clean the whole refrigerator because of it. Yeah. Beer will do the same cream. thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Just, just a, Just a mess. Yeah, it's like, how long do you even forget it in there? Yeah, well. Well, you know how easy that is. If you stuck it in there, that means you wanted it to be colder, but there was something going on. So here, get colder. And then, oops. It's the next day. It's the next day. Shit, is that where that is? (laughs) I wondered what I did with that soda. (laughs) Now we have a cherry Coke froze, uh, froze tea. Not a frosty. <laughs> what the heck is a frosty? <laughs> the- that is one that got left in the freezer. <laughs> What's the word? Now all over it. Frosty. Oh my gosh. Frosty. frosty. A frosty cherry was good. <laughs> a cherry. Yeah, I like a frosty better. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. Frosty. A slushy, slushy. Yeah, it's totally slushy. That's a good friend of it's mine. Hello, Gabrielle. Oh my gosh, I, I, she's our 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 resident horse lady. She gets to be around more horses than I do these days. Really? Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. yeah. It's cool. I didn't know that. It's kind of nice that she joined us today. That's cool. Yes. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> and uh, uh, oh, we have got granola bars, protein bars, etc. Depending on, um, you know, if you're diabetic also, you have to prepare for that situation as well. Right. Well, that should be a lunchbox that goes with you all the time. That should be like a little small snack pack, packed in your purse, ready for any moment where you are, because that's you being proactive. You know, so many of us want to deny, oh, I don't, that's not, look, it's just about a change of diet and sticking with it. Every two hours, take it with you. Every two hours, the size of your fist, okay? That is the perfect amount to maintain your sugar in a good way. Think about it. Make sure you're eating things that don't promote sugar. You know, things that are good for you. Take it with you. Take it. Be proactive. Stop being like the old people that were like, no, that's not me. Oh, (laughs) you mean like the people who only take it when they need it? And then the doctor's like, no, Tracy. You're supposed to eat that every single day so it is in your system, not just when you think you need it. That was a shock. Exactly. To me, it was really a shock to me to find that out. I mean, it right. makes sense. It does. It makes total sense. I just never thought about it. I just thought, hey, the medicine, you take the medicine when you need it. No. Right. You take it every day. That way you don't have that I need it scenario. Feeling. Right. Because you're taking it. Because that's one of those better to have it so you won't need it. That was an (laughs) aha moment. moment. Yeah. 
Or what's yeah. that to say that that moment when you hear the pop and mm-hmm. you're like pop. The sound your head uh-huh. makes when it comes out of your butt for the first time. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm sure I heard that pop. I'm sure I heard that pop. Though, dang it, you know what? It seems like it reoccurs, though, too. You know, like, I feel like, wow, I've had my head out of my ass for a while, and then all of a sudden I'm like, pop, no. An epiphany. That's better. (laughs) An epiphany is much better. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Well, she's being kind as well. (laughs) Giving us good words. Yeah, yeah, because mine just, mine wasn't working. Okay, um, and we've kind of covered a drink of some sort. Right, you have to be proactive and figure it out to make sure you don't have exploding drinks yeah. in the car. Yeah, we're like, just figure that one out yourself. Mm-hmm. Let us come up with. Um, right. <laughs> blankets. Yes, and, and it should be warm ones, too, you know, ones that... um actually return that heat that you're putting out some don't you know you might actually want to invest in like wool for the car because of the way 90 shuts down that allows you to have if you get wet it doesn't matter wool will still keep you warm so you know put that in the car yeah okay that's an expensive blanket in the car are you warm today on the three days you were stuck on 90 you are yeah, and you know what? If they are expensive, take a trip to the Goodwill or the Salvation Army. Mm-hmm. Um, you'll be surprised at the blankets you find in there. And right be like, oh, my God, no, I'm not getting anything from the Goodwill. What do you mean? They've been washed, sterilized. Um, they are clean. They just smell a little like mothballs, and it takes a few years to get it out. And they've been in a warehouse. Yeah, absolutely. That's right. That's that's all that that is all that's going on with them clothes, though. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're perfectly fine. Um, and the nice thing is, is because of your investment level. So, like doing sweat lodges, you don't want to take one of your nice skirts, put it on, crawl in the mud, burn it in the fire, you know, touch it to a stone accidentally, and destroy it. Where you can go to the Salvation Army and buy these skirts that just allow you to invest in the ceremony and not concern yourself with any of that crap. You know? And not only and that, but it most likely caught your eye. Mm-hmm. So it's um, getting a little bit of love again. Oh, right. And it's, and it's going to be your ceremony skirt now. So it's actually more important than the one you don't want to ruin. In all honesty, once it attends the first ceremony, that is a powerful skirt. Goodwill is the second hand. I've seen many very nice things. Yeah. Me Just second. Mm-hmm. I used oh, to buy leather okay. coats there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Strip them apart, make them into a bag. Yep. And as a reseller, the Goodwill in the Salvation Army is your best friend. Oh, yeah. I bet. I it bet. Is. It is um, because people donate the craziest stuff. They just don't want right. it. Um, they don't like the way it looks on them. Right. It's, or yeah. it was grandma's. I don't know what to do with it. It's taken up space. Hand oh, ceremony skirts are the best handmade. Yeah, well, I don't have any of those. <laughs> I, now I have to put my glasses on. Oh, jeez. I'm sorry, but a friend wanted to join for a minute, so I'm going to let her. Oh, aw, yeah, I don't blame you. All right, you done? Was that enough? I'm not holding you. Don't act like I am. And no, you're not going Love, to take um, over. Crochet. Well, I make um, pixie dusters, the long flowing dusters. I've seen those. Sleeves. Those are cool. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Well, I make them also without sleeves. So they're like a vest, but they come a little long, a little bit longer. And the rip fabric made me think of it because I would love to rip fabric and tie them and some odd and end strings of beads or on the back side of them. I have two of the vests made, but I'm like, I just need to add something to it. And the rip fabric would be. Yeah. It would be really cool looking. I like that rip fabric idea. 
Yeah, I do too. But I don't sew that kind of sewing. I was going to say, man, I can't even imagine what it would take to sew a skirt. Now me, I'm just like, I'm going to find an old bed sheet that I like the color and, you know, shred it. And then I'm going to knot it in some way. (laughs) Maybe make Uh, one side longer than the other and add a bell or a bling or something. Right. A friend of, or several of the women in our circle have tie skirts. They're made out of neckties. Oh, I'll they are so cool. Something like that too. And oh. hello, Carissa. Uh, the rip blankets. Are you talking yeah. about ones that like the whole outside is ripped? Or is that something totally different? No, there's a, I think there is a, she has one. I feel like, uh, yeah, I think that you're, yes. Look at that. Oh, sh- She's coming in really fast with her comments, man. Like, boom, boom, boom. That's yeah, nice. so your signal is great. Not exactly like the blankets. I used a machine like the skirts. I have the tie skirt. Yeah, yeah, rub it in. <laughs> oh, my God. I would love to see that. It and I would adorable. love, love, love to see um, a rip skirt that would be, that is so bohippian. So bohippian. <laughs> it is. I love it. I it love is. It. Oh my gosh. I could see a rip skirt with one of the uh, crochet halter top thingies I make, the ones that tie. Oh my gosh. Oh, it would yeah. be stinking adorable. Right. Not on me, but I mean, hey, <laughs> on somebody I'm else. In these days, it doesn't matter what you look like. It's you that usually has an issue with it. I always thought I was worrying about, you know, other, but no, it's what I was seeing in the mirror. I look in the mirror now and I'm like, well, you know what? I'm 57. I still weigh 128 pounds, right? Okay. Yeah. Some of the fucking things are not fitting quite right, but you know what? It was a good ride. I would wear my bikini out. Screw it. I earned every wrinkle and sag that I have developed. They're all mine. I love them. Yep. It is wonderful. Moms didn't tell us that to be okay with being beautiful. It was more about be more beautiful. No, there is no such thing. No, be happy with who you are. And I, I, I am extremely happy with myself. Yeah, I work out and, but, um, uh, but that's because I like food. I'm not yeah. trying to get to a smaller clothes size or even a smaller number on the scale. Right. Nothing like that. Nothing like that. Or a BMI number. Sure, that would be nice if, you know, those were fringe benefits. But right. no. And as a matter of fact, I'm not even working out enough to eat it, to work off my coffee. Yeah, right. <laughs> I think I eat more than I work out, but, um, yeah. So that's the only reason why I work out. I mean, it's yeah. For the health benefits, but not for no, you know, like, no, no. I have an aversion to food. Um, I'm always and constantly having to remember to eat, make an effort to eat. I have an aversion. I, I really don't like it. Food has always had consequences. It looks like Carissa said the baby heard me and said, nah, nah. That's cute. Yeah. Hey, Torsten. And no, you cannot fly south with your bingo wings. Nice. (laughs) We all have them, man. I know. Well, see, it's not so much the way this is going now. It's the way this skin, when I turn my hand this way, that I'm like, and then if you lift it up like this, you're like, hey. Why are you letting go? (laughs) (laughs) Why are you letting go? You look normal like this. (laughs) Just walk around like that. (laughs) No, I cannot lift my arms. (laughs) um, Yeah, aging. This aging thing sucks. It's got to stop. I don't know. I think it's kind of fun. Look at how many things you have just realized is just not worth all that shit anymore. 
it's not worth it. But some right. of it is like, like, I don't even know. Okay, we like, can sprain you. our back getting out of bed now. Okay, that's real. That's a real thing. It is. What happened? I was reaching for my foot to put my sock on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That shit happens now, but it's okay. I fell off the bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that is bad now. Any kind of fall. It doesn't even matter if you're only this far from the floor. I just lay there and assess the situation. I I, I was out at the barn one day, and, and I was climbing around like I'm 20 because I'm short. You know, how do you get anything done? And, and I climbed up on this semi ladder. So it's a broken ladder. It's got a couple rungs on it. To get a chicken down. Oh, I thought you meant like a truck semi ladder, not like half a ladder. <laughs> no, and I'm climbing up on the coop. <laughs> I get the chicken down, right? I throw her down. Stop trying to lay eggs up there, you know. And as I'm coming down, all of a sudden I just went poop <laughs> and fell over. <laughs> and I'm laying on the ground like, wait a minute, because I meant that one rung was missing. You know how you go down, and then it just the ladder didn't fall over somehow. I let go of the ladder and just fell sideways. Punk. I laid there for a good five minutes, wiggled my toes, wiggled my fingers, kind of moved my head a little bit. I'm like, all right, I, th I think I can get up now. Guys, <laughs> you and your daughter-in-law, she said she <laughs> threw her neck out looking at her foot. <laughs> so is her middle name Grace? <laughs> is it's it? a thing. It's it is. a thing. <laughs> it's a, it really is. It seems like it's a thing. Oh my goodness. This so one must be in heat. Oh, this one Poor just thing. had her. She's got her first heat. Damn it. <clears throat> Man, we got to get to spade and some freaking cats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we don't have any males, but now we got three females that can. Don't get me wrong. I'm enjoying the attention, but it's it's like all wrong. All <laughs> <laughs> I, I like all grace. That is not true. I've seen how she behaves in public. She's just physically might be a little weak. <laughs> in <the stands. laughs> you know, so like out there in the world talking to people, she got walking around too much. She got this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Kitty, kitty. Oh, I'm so digging it. Wait till Papa gets home and finds out how friendly you are today. <laughs> He's got me. My husband would be like, get that thing out of here. Oh, my husband is the cat person, though. Look he up says, clots and you'll see my picture. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have. I don't think they have photos. You're not the type of girl who runs in flip flops, are you? I you think heard she does. On a video called the first, this is that's a true statement. <laughs> <laughs> that is a true statement. <laughs> never. <laughs> she never yeah. runs in flip flops. I don't know. I've seen her do the shuffle. <laughs> <laughs> Toes curled up so that feet <laughs> so that shoes don't yep. fall off. Oh my goodness. What? I do not have what you need, kitty kitty. <laughs> and see Simon, my adult male cat. Now he's neutered, but he will only service one female cat in this house. He will service the one that's his age. The rest of them, he's like, "Oh, stop that! Why are you all over me? Ew! Well, get away, girl germ! <laughs> what is up with that? I mean, the minute Cleo comes into heat, he's like, "Bitch, shut up! Here, let me shut you up." <laughs> I'm flip 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 flops now. <laughs> I wear a cry. Uh huh. You got a point. You know what? <laughs> I heard um, the mismatched Crocs is a thing now, like mismatched yeah. socks. Well, I like mismatched socks. Hi, baby. Yeah, it's just easier. I mean, who really has time? If you happen to find mates when you're folding clothes, Right. I mean, that's a plus, but yeah. It's a plus. <laughs> wow. They're all like, want to be on TV or some shit today. 
You know what? I um saw there's this one lady. I watch her videos once in a while, and that cat knows. <laughs> Because they've cat, never cared. Her cat every single time does the same exact thing back and forth, back and forth. So now she brings <laughs> toys and she throws them. Cleo's not the toy one. If Simon got in my lap, I'd be able to get him to go. Simon likes to play. He doesn't like having to eat upstairs, though. He thinks that that's messed up and we should do something about it. <clears throat> well, I think he's overweight and he should just deal with it. And just walk the goddamn steps. <laughs> right. I do these steps as, as many as 10 to 12 times a day to make up for the outdoor activity I'm not doing. So, But you're walking those stairs. <laughs> you can do it, too. You have four legs. You can get up them easier than I can. Oh, my goodness. How funny. And he just every day when it's time for Big D to put down, they get friskies as a side dish kind of thing. And as soon as he starts heading up the stairs, Simon's on the counter going, hey, all the time. Socks are fine. Are we bordering on laziness to avoid matching our shoes? <laughs> well, maybe. Kids do it all the time. Hey, they, kids wear them on the wrong feet and somehow can go all day. Oh, so, my God. That's not even maybe. funny because I had these one boots that they I don't know where they were made but you never knew if it was a right or a left I was in my locker at work one time and one of my friends actually put a right and a left sticker on them oh that's so nice thank you <laughs> Oh, I hate it when you get something that you're just like, I don't know. No. I made a big order from Amazon, got me in trouble, and I got a lecture about how I have to go back to using only my allowance. So I'm like, okay. Um, um, that's that's um, the look. Bad. That's the look. Um, what is bad. up with those? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off, Kathleen. That's okay. Uggs are bad. They really abuse their sheep. I mean, the thing is, is what, what's, what's so cool about them? Well, they're supposed to be incredibly warm, comfortable, blah, blah, blah. But after I saw how they shear their sheep, I don't give a crap if they massage my toes when I wear them. You can't do that to an animal. It's, it's terrible. There's no reason a sheep should ever leave <clears throat> the shear bleeding. Sheep are easy to shear. I watch a woman that's no more than 130 pounds. She does, she's on Facebook Reels a lot. And she can move around these big, huge rams and shave them and not one nick. Not one nick. And that is proof right there. Do alpacas that have never been shaved that fight back. Or llamas that are like ready to spit at her and kick at her and still get all the way through it. And the animal is better for it. Not just because she didn't give up, but because she's good and they are filled with trust. She does a wonderful job. I will watch her videos over and over, even if I've already seen them. Huh. How cool is that? Mm -hmm. How cool is that? When you see that wool as she's cutting it off and you see it kind of like flow out, it's just so cool. <laughs> and yeah. It's like, what? How does it do that? Whoa. Huh. I love sheep. I got a thing. Sheep are cool. I've never been able to have one, but I like them. Well, oh, she says there's nothing good about them. What the heck? No cow. <laughs> no sheep. I no know. llama. No alpaca. Uh, What's the difference between a llama and an alpaca? Alpacas are smaller. Um, they have a different type of fur. They require a little bit different care. So alpacas tend to be a little bit nicer. And llamas tend to be the guard dog that you buy for your alpacas. Gotcha. So you put a llama out there with your alpacas because that llama will stomp them out of anything that comes into your field. Huh. They are very, very protective creatures. Um, it's amazing. Uh, I'm trying to get an emu, which he's like, no. 
because I let him watch useless farms and now he's seen how Karen behaves. So I messed up there. There will be no emus. <laughs> um, so now I'm going to shoot for a peacock and I haven't showed him any of Daryl who is on useless farms because Daryl's a dick. Okay. So, but I haven't showed him any of Daryl because I feel that the lady at useless farm rescues most of her animals. So, you know, they come with quirks. Right, right. Karen is an emu that for 13 years, every relationship she had was destroyed. They're a flocking bird that needs relationship. So when she got Karen, Karen might be a little aggressive. Um, would you get a rescue or would you like mail or like mail order? I'd buy that. eggs. I'd buy eggs. I'd buy eggs. There's a couple places here locally on Craigslist where you can buy eggs that have been checked for fertility. So then it's just about getting them home, getting them in the incubator at the right temperature. So when they are hatched, then I can expose them to the sheer cuddliness of me. And most animals it works on, like those roosters I have, I have eight roosters that right now, all of them probably go seven, eight pounds. They, most of them are knee high and none of them attack. Let me tell you what. I had a couple roosters. The little, the little banny roosters. Evil, evil. They can be evil. I didn't have a problem with them. The, um, the male, I don't even know what kind he was. I don't need, I don't know, but he was tall. That son of a gun would peck me in the butt. Every single time I walked in that pen, every single time he pissed me <laughs> off. One time he pecked me and I turned around and I doinked him with the feed cup I had in my hand. Mm. And I real quickly went and got all the eggs and I saw all the chickens looking beyond me. Every single one of them looking past me. And I was like, He's behind He's me, and I swear to God, every single one of them said, uh-huh, and I turned around, and he was so mad. He would, like, puffed up two times bigger. I ran out of there. I <laughs> ran. I was like, I'm not coming back in here again. I don't know what it was. Every single time, he'd take a plug out of my ass. Hated that rooster. We had... Um a friend of ours hooked us up with a Rhode Island red. He had to have been like this tall. So, you know, like three foot from the floor. He was huge. He lived a week in quarantine. Two days. Uh, out hello of to you. Yes. I see that two of my love bugs said they love me, which they're my love bugs. Of course I love them. Uh, their dad is the one that killed the Rhode Island red rooster. We didn't know that he was picking on the kids because, you know, they like to pick on the ones that make them, that they got a little bit of height equivalency. And they started with, he started, yeah, he started with Emmett. So Emmett just didn't want to go outside. So we didn't know what was going on. Enya ended up coming over with her dad and mom. And she went out to play with Emmett too. And Charles looked out the window and the rooster was on her head. Ten minutes later, later the rooster was dead. Yeah, I don't blame him. Oh my goodness! Gone. Yeah, one of the bands yeah. attacked her. Boom! That sucker died. He was like, "Wow, mom, them suckers are tough." I stabbed him and still had to chase him. <laughs> yeah, um, but some roosters, you just there's nothing you could do about it. Now I've got one out there right now. He is a copper moran, so he's absolutely gorgeous. He's got beautiful orange neck and really gorgeous blue plumage and stuff. He's gorgeous, which them suckers tend to be the nastiest ever. But he saw his brothers get murdered by a raccoon. And before that, they had tried to kill him. So he got to come in the house and get pampered and loved and cuddled. Oh, yeah. After he saw the murder, it changed his total opinion of me, right? And him and his girlfriend, I can do anything I want with him. I can walk in the coop, pick him up, give him some love. He's like, no, no, it's okay. I'll tolerate you. 
He don't start no fights with nobody. He's in there right now with three. There's three roosters, and I don't have enough hens. He's like this have- queen. She's yeah, gone. She saved me. She saved me. Thank you. I saw what could happen. Oh my God. <laughs> when I came out in the morning, I'm like, there were wing parts. They pulled them right through the dog crate. I know it. I know it. I don't know what got ours. Um, the first time is just like the 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 bigger birds got them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, the second time we had chickens, we had actually got a shed. All right. Open and close the door, let them in and out. Nothing will get to them. Yeah. Bull crap. Bull Something crap. gets in the cracks. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, eventually it's an Amish built shed. It's rough cut lumber. So eventually mm-hmm. it cracks. I don't know what got them. But Probably a I, weasel. Yeah, yeah. Or they said possibly a fox because we do have fox in the area. Um anything and yeah my girlfriend and i were watching hacks and we ended up i need to put linoleum down in my coop i put down a floor so step one i put down a floor then you put down linoleum and then you can clean your coop with a broom yep just sweep it sweep it right out right yes um, she yes. put linoleum down in hers and she was like oh my god thank you for that five minute hack yay so that's that's a handy one um i made all kinds of nest boxes I'm gonna tell you they are gonna nest where they want, especially if you got yeah. bands. Yeah. They're gonna they're gonna go where they want. It doesn't matter what you provide. So that's we how had I a real two. nice, huge, huge um chicken house for them. And it was it was great. And it had these double, it had two uh levels, had a little ladder, you know, steps going up to the next level. You open the back right. door, open the doors in the back. Super easy getting the eggs. Well, just for fun, Larry made a little A-frame out of windows. And um, we put a cross on it and dubbed it their church. And every every single one of the little banny ones were in there. Every single one of them used that little A-frame made out of two windows instead of the huge house. Well, bannies really don't like the bigger chickens. That's what I take from it. They Because I noticed that I put in a roost up high, and most of my bannies work their way around to it. But it's a little close to the red light, so they end up moving into the, the nest box, you know, because they're like, oh, fuck. And my red light's not in the coop. It's on top of the coop. Have fun playing in the snow, kids. Have fun. Be warm. Go pee before you bundle. Good call. So. I know. I know it. <laughs> and then it's like, all right, kids, hold on. Hold on, kids. Mom's got to pee. I get to the chiropractor now and I tell him, don't get up until I get done in the bathroom. I have to go pee. It doesn't matter if I have to pee. I can't be thinking of that while I'm on the table, and I will. Are you guys going to, sorry, are you guys going to build a snowman or something? What are you going to do out there? (laughs) Do you want to build a snowman? (laughs) Do you guys have a sledding hill? Up here, but they have a small slope in their backyard can't go outside the backyard they'll end up on 394 oh my gosh that's not good (laughs) no you can't sled that no no nay nay (laughs) i don't want to go but i told them (laughs) go (laughs) sledding party would be so much fun oh yeah i hear it is my friend stephanie does those every once in a while Mm. i am gonna have to pop off to the restroom. I apologize. I will be right back. Okay. okay. No problem. It would be tinted brown and yellow. Oh my gosh, how funny. Are you going to have a snowball fight? <laughs> Oh, 
Or are you going to put their little butts to work? Give each one of them a shovel. Have the youngest one do like the sidewalk. That's easy. And then the older ones can do the driveway. Do you have a long driveway? We we kind of do. Kind of, sort of. Yeah, they're grounded. No snowball fights for Carissa. Oh, my goodness. So we do need to plan a sledding party would be the best. So if Kathleen has an awesome hill. All right. Carissa's starting to ground the kids if she gets hit with a snowball. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Mom. <laughs> Participate. Okay, so how many kids does um Carissa and Charles have? Um, they have two together and two bonus. So they have four children. Yeah. I, I I thought, and I was like, why in the world did you not even ask her when you were had her on alive? <laughs> yeah. It because looked busy so enough to know. <laughs> the two we saw are their biologicals. So Enya and Torsten are her and Charles's. And then Shelby and Halona are from a previous relationship. And they're old, older, like school age. Uh, yes. Um, Halona is 11 now and Shelby's 16. Oh, holy shit. Well, she's a bonus all the way around. We met her when she was three and we've just done everything we can to keep her in our lives. We so have all. I thought Carissa was like 23, 24 years old. I will not disrespect anything, but no, she full grown woman. Yeah, I thought she was, a, I thought she was, she's probably outside by now. But yeah, I thought she was very, very, I thought she was a very young lady. Uh, she definitely is holding her youth very well. Yes, yes, she looks wonderful. Uh-huh. No, I, I would never have thought she has a 16-year-old daughter. Good for her. Well, that's a bonus child. That's a bonus child. So she is not responsible for birthing that one or Halona. Okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. and and the oldest is a bonus child all the way around so she came into this when the relationship developed actually with my mom first because charles's um second wife was my mom's health care worker so i got to meet my oldest granddaughter then and then charles and the health care worker began a relationship which means then I started getting called grandma by Shelby. And yep. that was it. I was totally in. Um, so I have tried all along. It doesn't matter what relationship. She is my number one grandchild. Yeah, that's first. Cool. Yeah, that's cool. And Carissa says, my bonus kid's mother is also amazing and beautiful. Indeed. Agree. That's cool. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, they really um, are an excellent example of how you can move on from being in a relationship to being in a relationship about the kids. They're a very good example of that. It's it's very impressive. Yeah, I understand. I can understand that. Mm -hmm. it, it is a trick in itself, you know. When um, my son-in-law, um. So when my daughter passed away, the kids stayed with her wife. Oh. And so um, her wife had to co-parent with her ex-husband, my daughter's ex-husband. Wow. And they are doing such an amazing job. Such wow. an amazing job. Yeah. Yeah, wow. they did. they're doing wonderful. Yeah. That's impressive. Yeah. And um, they have, you know, they have their visitations. They live, you know, so long with mom, so long with dad. And, you know, every time they post things, it's 
Yeah, they they really do co-parent. Amazing. Ama it, it, it's, it could not have been easy. And I know it's not easy. I know it's not. No, it, it's not. It's definitely not, which is because we can't take our own crap out of the situation. I'm done with you. Well, great. The kids aren't. Yeah, take exactly. Your, yeah. Take your personal stuff out of there. Yep. The kids are not done. You cannot be alienating. That is cruel and inhumane because the only person it hurts is the kids. If you love yeah. your kid, you will figure out a way to get along with this person. Yeah. You don't have to be married. Yep. And that's, so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they were, um, well, dad is my daughter's ex husband. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have an ex dealing with the widow. Right. And doing it like a real person. Yeah. Doing they it did. like a human. That's yeah. great. Yeah. They did great. Yeah. All yeah. four kids, they're amazing. Amazing. That is, that is good. And those kids have such an example. Of how to do them. it. Right. Yeah. yeah. And to teach, teach another group. No, no, we can do it like this. All right. Mm -hmm. This didn't work. Fine. Just you know, because like, we don't like each other doesn't mean. Yeah. Right. The kids still love you. Yeah. So that's great. I'm going to bounce off of that. You know, I've had a lot of my friends. I've come into meeting them in certain relationships, you know. And then they break up and you're like, oh, crap. Well, I know. I now don't, it, I don't want to land on one side or the other, you know? I yep. just, so I always tell them, well, I wasn't sleeping with either one of you. So none of what's going on between you matters to me. None. If we were all three in a relationship, then we all probably should be involved. And then I should probably be pissed at somebody, but. Oh goodness gracious! Just just the pain itself. Just just being a parent in itself is hard enough. So if you support and help, no matter where it's coming from, except get right. that because parenting is not easy. No, no, it's not always fun either. Oh, it's never. No. What's fun about parenting? You when have they go to sleep. <laughs> you have to be strict. You have mm -hmm. to stay on your toes. You have mm -hmm. to wash their clothes. You have to feed them. Mm -hmm. You have to put up with their attitude. You have to put up with their attitude. Their emotional traumas from their day away. <sighs> yes. It is not easy being in a, a no. parent. It is so much easier just to say, fine, eat that third bowl of ice cream. I don't care. I don't care. Yeah, I, it's whatever. But no, as a parent, you're like, no, you can only have one bowl of ice cream. That's right. Right. And if you're mad at me, I'm doing my job. So if you're mad at me, you're only getting half a bowl. <laughs> right. Right. But I did figure that. I used to tell my kids that all the time. Though, If you're mad at me, I'm doing my job. Yes. Yeah. So go ahead. Be pissed. Means yep. I'm being successful at what I'm supposed to do here. Good morning, Whatever. Susan. Hi. Gosh, we haven't seen or heard from you in a long time. <laughs> I hope you are doing well. I know the last time we were, um, I think your daughter was going through a little bit of problems. So hopefully mm -hmm. all that is um, taken care of. And things are much better today. Susan. This has become a thing now. Everybody wants to be on YouTube, huh? Yeah. It's I because two cats are in heat. So I'm the next best thing to a boy cat today. Next best thing until they want more and I don't have it. And then they're like, bye. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> you got your oh, Christmas nice. shopping done? Wow, not Good fair. You. I haven't even started. Oh my gosh. I've I have started, but um yeah. No, you know yeah. how you know how let me tell you how I got. So I'm like, oh my gosh, that would be a perfect Christmas gift for the grandkids. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's a boy gift, you pick up however many boy gifts you need, mm -hmm. and then it's like and then I have piles and bags of all this stuff. 
Right. And you have to um, go. Yeah. And then it's yeah. like, is it even going to amount to anything by the time I separate it? So I'm pretty sure I'm not done. Right. 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 That's what I like about Yule, though. Best part of Yule. I'm going to make them something or I'll give them a gift card because sometimes it's nice as a kid to get something that you can make use of. So that's Especially something. if you're gamers. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm lucky right now um, because most of them are homeschooled. There's not a whole lot of pressure for that kind of stuff. Oh, good. Because yeah. they, you know, mm-hmm. next door, they don't have Wi-Fi. They have a video game, but they have a limited game collection. Only so much time that you're allowed to play. You know, there's rules that go with it, which is really impressive. Um, yeah. Yeah, because I know that takes work. So, you know, mm-hmm. I'm not going to go, baby, because it was a nightmare for me. Uh, <laughs> you figure it out. But there, I don't have to worry about that too much. Like Jared's easy. He likes little toys. Jared loves little toys. Little toys are very inexpensive. And he loves the smaller, the freaking better. And I don't know yeah. how. But he, yeah. He loves them. So I don't know what the big awesome. deal is about them now, but there are a lot of kids who love those little ones. Mm-hmm. He carries them around. He takes care of them. He keeps track of them. And I have one I keep in my purse Aww. in case we go somewhere and he needs something to keep him busy. He's like, I'll keep that in your purse. Okay. So I do. Because it's that easy. I hand him that. I'll be back. You know, so if I go to a dentist appointment and he's sitting in the car with Papa, it's okay. He's got his little dude. Yep. He's happy. It's like, wow, I love how easy you are to entertain. (laughs) Not when his sister's with him. No. All our children are easy to please. And and Mm. Susan, this is your first time ever being prepared, already finished. Uh, yeah. You are, you are on it. You are on nice. it. Hey, I sold one of the bags that I made. Yeah, that's right. You were telling me about that. Yeah. Congratulations. You go, girl. I feel really good about it. That it would be the first that uh, first bag sold in that collection. I'm working on the third one. Um, and the woman didn't even have to think about it. The price didn't make her uncomfortable, nothing. And that was wonderful, too, because it was that moment. I know that bag was made for me. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, yes. I got to do a couple tweaks to it today to make sure that everything will be good and secure. And these were things I was going to do anyway. So I'm going to just boom, 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 throw it in the box, and it'll be ready to ship out tomorrow morning. How awesome. Good for mm-hmm. you. Yeah, it feels really good. She asked, did you make it yourself? And so I, I hand-stitched every stitch. Yes, ma'am. Yep. Did, did, did. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I'm very excited about that. I'm really hoping that the drum bag will go next. Oh, yeah. I'm sure it will. I'm sure. Made with love. Absolutely made with love. hmm mm-hmm. And I already have a, com- well, I don't have a commission bag. The guy didn't give me any money down because I told him not to. But he asked for a soft-sided briefcase. Wow. So we're going to see what I can come up with. I'll let you know. That's awesome. <laughs> Did he give you, like, it, um, specific? Um... It's got to be the size of a business checkbook. So you know about this long? Oh, yeah, gotcha. Approximately about that deep. Wow. You know, that, that much space inside kind of thing is what I'm going to aim for though because if the checkbook's in there nothing else is going in there if you keep it the size of the checkbook right right so I'll make it a little wider at the base so that that allows for a little bit more than the checkbook and then he wanted a couple pockets for little checkbooks and credit cards that is stumping me a little because I use this tool to do all of my sewing. So I don't sew with any kind of needle. And I refrain from using a hole punch except when I lace the handles, right? So um, this tool does not have a lot of flexibility. And it is going to come through. You're going to see the stitching if I put in pockets. So thus is why it has me stumped as to how I can do this and like the way it looks on the outside. 
Yeah. Without adding an extra bulk. Right. I've got a couple ideas. I was thinking I could put some fabric in there and make pockets in the fabric and then sew the fabric in with the side. So sew all of it in together. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. It's got me stumped. I'll let you know when I get that figured out. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it's going to look great. I'm sure it's going to look great. What are I you hope doing, so. Mm. Oh, um, what time is it? Well, how long have we been on here? I have no idea. Oh, wow. Not bad. An hour mm. and five minutes. So we'll Not go for bad. another few more minutes and um, cut it short. Cut our video. Maybe put pockets first. Right. Maybe I can sew the pocket in with the side of the bag to make it a little bit wider so that it just so, so that's a good idea. Thank you. The only thing that sucks would be the smiley face at the bottom. Where the bottom of the pocket is sewed in. But wait, what if I folded the fabric? See? Headache by the numbers. No. Trouble uh, by the score. <laughs> <laughs> so what colors um leather are you using? It's kind of a wineish color. Yeah. Yeah, he's into red. Red's his color. So I'm thinking I'm gonna use this wine and a brown. Is that what they call oxblood? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know I don't what I'm know. talking about either, really. No, when it comes to colors, I don't know. I just know that that leather looked kind of burgundy. I can I can bring it to you, and we can decide if we think it's burgundy. <clears throat> oh, I'm the worst <clears throat> one for colors. <laughs> My husband's <clears throat> colorblind, so imagine the fun he is for me. <clears throat> Sorry, puppy. I'll say to him, do you like that? And then he says a color, and I'm like, that's not what freaking color it is. What are you talking about? What did, where did you get that from this? Okay, so this is what it looks like on the leathery side. This color, which I kind of got is a wine color. Yeah. You know? Because mm -hmm. there's a brown in here that I mean, dude, that got me really excited. Where'd it go? Down, down, down. Who put it on the bottom? It's just the way the inside of the brown leather looks like it has. It's not suede looking. It looks furry. How huh. far in are you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I bought a whole new box from the lady on Etsy. Wow. So I bought a whole other 10 pounds. This is like my fourth box. Wow. I told my husband, I need, because look at this stuff. It's gorgeous. Yeah. You know, this is a beautiful pebbled leather. This is beautiful suede side. It's fabulous. It's sturdy. It'll hold up for what I want to do. Some of the colors are just burgundy. smoking. I think you're right. I think that was a burgundy wine, burgundy. Some of them have an interesting pattern in the suede. You see that's got kind of lines in it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and then it's got a beautiful brown on this side. What? You wow. Know? Her stuff is great. Look at all oh, this gray. This gray piece right here is heavy. It is wow. large. Holy shit. Right? And then look at this side. This is the pebbled side. This is all like Cadillac freaking leather. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, no fooling. It's just like, yeah, I got to get it from her. That's some high-grade leather. It's a good price. It's always freaking quick. I get it within five days of ordering at least. So you cannot complain about that. And this piece is huge. Yeah, it is. My husband's like, but it's so odd shaped. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I could do so much with that. Yeah, and just the, the thing is, is there's so much good stuff right in the center. Right. Here it is. This is what I was looking for. So this is the, the leathery side, right? Okay, yeah. Look at that brown suede there. Wow. That is fucking fuzzy. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm speaking a little French at the moment. 
that is super texture fuzzy <laughs> like mm. Yeah, that's super yeah. pretty. <laughs> yeah, I was I was like, ooh, I might have to message her with some pictures and be like, hey, I need more, much, much more of these. Yes, what, you got to go outside? Come on, let's go outside. I do not want to do that, and I really wish I had a farm employee. He wants to find the snow. Yeah, I am just going to hike through it, feed my chickens and ducks and... Uh -huh. Roosters and run back in. I know. I just I want to start a fire and sit in front of the fireplace, but um, <coughs> the Christmas tree up, and we don't we won't use the fireplace for the Christmas tree. Up. We'll wait. Nah, they're a little close. They're a little yeah. close. Oh yeah, just so. on general principles. Yep. <laughs> it's funny how that works, right? <laughs> Heat resistance My, is not flame retardant. No, no, no. And but it's kind of funny that once upon a time we used to go get these trees and put these freaking lights on them. It got so hot you couldn't even touch them. I know it. And the stuff didn't catch fire. No, no, it's weird. Then you went and got the well, good stuff some of them did actually. I mean, I guess yeah. we did. But that was wiring more than bulb. It was somebody that you know put them away and that cloth wire started wearing out. I mean, it's, it was cloth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was cloth. It you was. Know, when you go in a house and find cloth wire, you're like, oh no, this is going to cost a fortune. <laughs> I know. Sunny, Sunny there. there. Mm. Well, we had what to show her. <clears throat> oh no, my hair's falling apart. I don't know if I can turn around camera but i'm gonna see because i have to say sunny sunny it is sunny susan what is your temp hmm. oh yeah anybody like uh, to join yeah yeah uh -huh. Yeah, my ducks haven't even come out of their house yet today. They're like, screw that. I don't blame them. I don't blame them at all. Like, not doing it. You can't make me. It says it is 25 degrees here in Ooh, West Hill. Oh, it's wonderful. Alexa, what's the temperature? Right now, it's 21 degrees Fahrenheit. We're 21. Expect a high of 25 <laughs> Now I am. She just gonna kind of rub that in every day. Every day she's I rubbing know in that good weather. Or New Mexico is chilly, but forty-two here would be balmy. Yeah, she's gonna go all the way up to fifty. I'm so jealous. I know, I know. The freaking pool's got a foot of snow <laughs> on it. <laughs> yeah, it's a trampoline. <laughs> Sucks. Agreed. 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 My husband says, well, do you want to move somewhere warmer? No, that's the whole problem. The next place I want to live is no warmer, so we might as well just stay here. Yeah. It is no warmer in Montana. I am certain of it. I have heard stories. And, hey, that one place I was looking at, you had to have a snowmobile to get to the garage. So I'm thinking they got, they got weather. Yeah, yeah. Susan's yeah. like, I do not miss New York. I don't blame you. I yeah. live here and sometimes I don't miss New York. <laughs> like, oh, I wish I could go home. But, oh, but I am. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I always thought it'd be warmer. I mean, Michigan's no warmer, but it's different because there's so much concrete. As soon as any sunshine comes out, it seems to warm up the areas around it. It's like there's just so many roads, so much concrete. That's all I can figure. Because... Possible that it, it that that mittens right up in them five lakes, you know. Yeah, how is it? Maybe it's because it just blows right across Michigan to us. Yeah, no fooling. <laughs> Maybe that's why. Exactly it. Oh gosh, I we went to Detroit to go to the Eastern Market. It was a frigid day, blowing snow, and I realized that no snow was piling up anywhere 
And the market is pretty close to the water, but it was like it was kind of blowing through instead of landing. It was cold. I was like, whose idea was this? Yeah, I know some people <laughs> who live um, in Michigan, or I should say um, acquaintances, and uh, she said the winters are bitter. Bitter cold. Oh, yeah. Cold, definitely. They got the cold going on. It's just that the pileup of snow, we tend to get more snow. Maybe it's all the subdivisions, too. Makes it hard for the snow to pile up like we see it. You know, because the rural areas are not where she's at. So when I get there, I'm always like, how is there not more snow? Susan, Tammy is planning a trip, like super soon in December. Yeah. Yeah, she's going to be gone for, what, a whole month? Yeah. She's coming to visit you? She's got it. She's got it all planned out. Well, she's getting mm -hmm. it all out. She is getting it all hammered out right now. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And she's gonna have a better time than she did last year. She's in much better health. Much better shape. Yeah. She much can better physically shape. get around a lot better. Yep. Mm -hmm. She's got some tone in them legs. That's Boop. right. Yep. That'll be awesome. That'd be really good. It will improve the trip a ton. Oh, yeah, just, and she'll probably feel better about everything. Mm -hmm. You yep. feel better. Right. Yeah. Can't, it, it, there's no way it can't make you better. That's if right. you've been sedimentary for any amount of time, sure, it makes you feel really crappy in the beginning, but over time, you start to just constantly feel it upgrade, so. Yep, yep. So I'm so happy for her. I think it's an awesome idea, a bucket list project. You're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy for her that she's able to do this. Right on, right on, and has the courage to do it. Yeah. Because she's doing it on her own. She's going to ride the rails on her own. Mm-hmm. It's like, you go, girl. That's right. Don't I forget right. your bandana. <laughs> I know. You know. I think it's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm so happy for her. And the fact that she's going, like I said, she's getting, and she's going to New Mexico. She's going to see both of her sisters. Which is awesome. Always need to stay close to family. Yeah. And all kinds of friends along the way. What a great idea. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What an exciting idea. And, hey, what better than to get out of Jamestown in December? I know. So they it. kind of. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, my God. Wow, well, you guys. I'm going to. But this short, my husband's calling me. I'm not quite sure what's going on, but um, All I will right. talk to you later. All right, Kathleen, thank you so much for um going live. You're welcome. I'll catch you later. Later. Stay warm. <laughs>